Hey YouTube, on July 6th, Shaman Utana Jessup, Stephen Darby Robinson, Larry Liston, Bridger Hunt, and myself loaded up and headed for Lake Powell for the sole purposes of being able to find the Egyptian hieroglyphs that a guy I went to school with found about 15 years ago. The only way to get there is by boat, and then you have to hike several miles in. So we loaded up and headed for Lake Powell. Once we got there, we stopped into the visitor center and talked with the on-site local resident expert to see if she'd heard of anything like that, and she hadn't, but she'd been working with the archaeologists, and she had even herself found uh, some new pit houses and archaeological things that was previously just hadn't been discovered yet. And this is only about four or five years ago when she discovered it. In fact, they named it after her because of the discovery. Well, the interesting thing to me about that is when I showed these Egyptian hieroglyphs to an archaeologist and told him they was down to Lake Powell, he told me they have to be modern and a fraud because they scoured all of the area before they built the dam and flooded the area and made Lake Powell. Everything was cataloged, everything was documented. Well, with the hundreds and hundreds of miles of shoreline and the twisty canyons, I don't know, I didn't know how that would really be feasible, but maybe it was. But here this uh, resident expert clearly proved that that statement's false because of what she found and because she was saying there's a bunch of other things that are being found all the time. Well, we set up camp. We didn't have time to, to go searching for these Egyptian hieroglyphs that we're looking for. And so the uh, visitor center, the gal there at the visitor center, told us about uh, a pit house and some Anasazi or Puebloan ruins in Forgotten Canyon called Defiance House. Well, the reason they call it Defiance House is because of the pictographs that are on the cliff wall above the settlement there, above the pit house and the ruins, and it's uh, uh, some, and it's a pic pictograph of, of two warriors with shields and clubs fighting each other, and that's why they de named this thing Defiance House, because of the defiance of the, the battle going on there. Well, this was found and documented in 1959, and they somehow, however, they they dated this thing to be around 1250 A.D. Well, when I got up there and looked at these pictographs, they looked fresh and modern to me, but yet the archaeologists say that these are 1250 A.D. Now, the problem I've been running into is every time I find something that is out of place archaeology, the archaeologists tell me it looks too fresh, it can't be old, there's no pantina. Well, look at these right here and tell me, you know, where's the pantina? How old does that look to you? Anyways, it was cool seeing this old pit house, even though it had been re reconstructed, there was still the original wood. When you got down into the pit house, you could still see the soot on the ceilings and walls for when they had their fires in there. If you ever get down to Lake Powell, check out Forgotten Canyon and check out um, Defiance House. It's pretty cool. Well, the next day we got up and headed for the area where we're searching for these Egyptian hieroglyphs and who knows if they're authentic or not but if they are authentic you know they have something to do with the Egyptians in the Grand Canyon because this is the same waterway um, it's got to be the same group the same culture and that's what I want to find out that's why I want to get a better picture of this search the area see if there is any connection see if anyways we got to the area, we searched, we was pretty confident we was going to find it. It was 100 degree, 110 degree weather. We hiked all over the place and put in a lot of miles and come up empty handed. I don't know how, but somehow we missed it. Well, after that, we was pretty beat. So we headed back to camp to rest us up and packed up and headed out the next morning. On our way home, we stopped in Hanksville to fill up and get gas at the, the gas station there. That's, that's uh, The store part of the gas station there is built into the sand, sandstone 
outcropping there. It was pretty cool. Anyways, uh, Shaman Utana happened to know the owners, and we got talking with him, and he was saying that his sister found an old, old article saying that uh, in the 1920s, the Smithsonian came down. They'd heard somebody told them about some hieroglyphs. They called them hieroglyphs. They didn't call them petroglyphs, Indian writings. They called them hieroglyphs. Anyways, the Smithsonian, and it was a huge panel, they came down, brought their saws, they spent a, took a whole crew and took the whole thing out, shipped it back to the Smithsonian where they was going to put it on display. So this newspaper article, like I say, was in the 20s. Well, this guy's sister wrote the Smithsonian about that because she wanted to see what these hieroglyphs looked like, why the Smithsonian would take these, and they, she got a reply back from them saying that they don't know anything she's talking about. They don't have no such record of anything like that. So is this another Egyptian hieroglyph panel that got hidden by the Smithsonian, or is this all just conspiracy theories about the Smithsonian hiding this stuff from us? I don't know. Well, when we got back home, Darby Robinson, who is a key figure in the Ancient Historical Research Foundation, started doing some research, and she came across a picture of some Egyptian hieroglyphs down at Lake Powell, but they're not the same ones we was looking for. She was able to contact the person who found these and got a GPS coordinates to them, and they're about 30 miles away from the area that we're looking for. So that tells me these things are spread a little bit farther than what we realize and and the same as these that we're looking for this lady says that these are off the beaten path in a remote location and so uh, I'm excited to head back down to Lake Powell now and try and find these plus research for the ones we're looking for so the mystery is getting bigger and bigger and bigger here was this done by some Egyptologist professor or are these part of the Egyptians from the Grand Canyon? What do these things say? And was there another colony of these Egyptians besides the one in the Grand Canyon? If you had that many in the Grand Canyon, surely there's more of them around. And if they're there, if this is real, if this is legit, if this ain't modern, the Ancient Historical Research Foundation is going to track this down and figure out what's going on.